Sex, cocaine, and puppies. <laughs> so we all have our favorite, obviously. Um, now what you might not know is that these all act on the same part of the brain as sweetness. However, excuse me, um, so you, uh, therefore it follows that sweetness is in very high levels of demand. However, our relationship with sweetness is itself quite ironically bittersweet. Stevia tastes awful, and consumers hate artificial flavorings almost as much as they hate calories. So why can't we have a simple, healthy sweetener? Millis Bio looked to the foundations of nutrition and realized that in fact we can, by evolving sensational proteins. So the proteins in your delicious breakfast this morning were taken to your stomach where they were easily and naturally digested into their constituent parts. These are then reassembled throughout your body to take up roles in practically every tissue there is. And it's because of this remarkable flexibility that we get to also tweak them to have a sweet taste, creating our sweetener of the future. So this will be an all-natural product, 100% protein, nothing else. It'll be 200 to 700 times as sweet as sugar, gram for gram, and it will be one calorie per gram, which in fact will make it sweeter on a per calorie basis than many artificial sweeteners. Furthermore, it will have no aftertaste, as it will contain none of the foul tasting components that are unfortunate in our competitors. We're going to take this remarkable product to an incredible market. Um, $70.2 billion global sweetness market, starting with the larger B2B sector. We've already identified three areas of particular interest in this B2B sector. The large cutthroat sweetened beverage industry, which has constant, constantly growing need for low calorie sweeteners. The young and thriving sports nutrition market, which has a unique demand for all of our value propositions, as well as high rate of acceptance of new ingredients. And the smaller but still interesting diabetic foods market. Now, obviously there's less competition in the diabetic foods market because carbohydrates are not an option. We're really excited about the prospect of being the first natural, non-stevia-based ingredient in this market. So, how? We made a platform, our artificial tongue. Then we spoke to our target markets. We went to the beverage industry and we asked them what their ideal ingredient would look like. We learned about high pressure bottling systems, um, water solubility standards, and made a protein to fit these specifications. We're going to screen this protein with our platform to make the perfect sweetener for this market. We're going to apply the exact same principle now to the other markets to create perfect sweeteners for each section. And this is a very powerful tool in and of itself, I hope you agree. But what's really exciting is what comes next. We can make different screens to achieve different tastes. We can take our beverage protein library and apply it to an umami screen to produce an umami flavoring for the same customer. If you're unaware, the umami market is a further $10 billion in 2016. We're already working on a sweetener, as I already mentioned. After this, we're going to progress to a new mammy flavor to tackle the dreaded monosodium glutamate, a neutral pH sour flavor that'll be kind on the gut and teeth, bitter blocking flavors for uh, foul tasting medicines, and perhaps even the holy grail, saltiness without salt. Now, in this manner, we don't consider ourselves to be a golden egg, but more of a golden goose. So our team is without a doubt our greatest asset. My name is Mike Sheehan, I'm CEO at Millis Bio. I have a bachelor's degree in neuroscience and I was recently awarded the title of best young entrepreneur from my district back in Ireland. Uh, in my role, I coordinate and lead our team, I develop our strategy and I communicate our work to wonderful people such as yourselves. Our CTO is Dr. Paul Young. Paul has over 20 years of experience in molecular biology and he applies this incredible mental muscle to drive our R&D forward. Mr. Friedens Ferdinands is our production technology specialist. Friedens studied for a master's in biochemical engineering at the University of London, and he applies this to our industrial technology, as well as five years of experience from entrepreneurship and consulting. Uh, last but not least is our operations manager, Mr. Dear McCall. Uh, Dearman studied for a Bachelor of Commerce, um, specializing in food marketing and management, and he brings this to work every day to work on our operations and finances. As well as this, we have two fantastic advisors. Uh, Mr. Roberto Nardi brings over 30 years of experience from the food industry, most noted predominantly at Unilever, but most recently at his own food technology consultancy company. Then, by contrast, Ms. Samara Ann Powell brings a totally different range of expertise from her equally distinguished career at places like United Crest and Ernest & Young. 
Both of these advisors have already made really distinct, outstanding contributions with game-changing advice and insight to the industries. So our achievements to date, um, most obviously, we have our tongue in a petri dish. Our artificial tongue has been up and running since January, and we expect to have our first sweet protein in Q4 of this year. We participated in the world-renowned Indie Bio Accelerator over the summer. Uh, we received a number of awards for um, entrepreneurship in Ireland, and we were featured on over a dozen online publications, notably the ones on screen. Um, this is probably the most exciting development from my perspective as CEO. Uh, we reached out to the major players in the industry, and we met with remarkable enthusiasm. Cargill and Jividan are two examples of companies that we are in an ongoing basis of communication with that have signed uh, documents essentially describing that they have a shared interest with us and they're equally excited about where the scope for collaboration is there between our companies. So moving forward with this, where is it going? Our research and development is focusing on development of our sweet protein by Q4 of this year and a establishment of a pilot facility following soon after in 2018, while business development is going to focus on closing our seed round very shortly and launching an early market in Q4 of 2018 and a Western market in Q4 of 2019. Speaking of a seed round, we're launching it today. We're seeking 1 million euro to fuel 18 months of operations. 60% Six, of this will be dedicated to research and development, 30% to our business development, and a further 10% to IP and regulatory process. So I wouldn't expect a lot of people to know, if I'm honest, that Millis is the old Irish word for sweetness. But what I and my team expect for the future is that it will become the new word for sweetness worldwide. So investors, we're inviting you to join us as we grow from tiny taste bud ticklers to towering tried and tested tycoons of taste. Thank you. So, Mike, give me this before I get lost again. No um, so, impressive names there, right? Givaudan, Cargill. Um, for a biotech company, a real biotech company for you, how important are these guys? I mean, maybe not everyone knows them. Maybe you want to expand a little bit on that. Sure. Um, so, these guys are huge players, although they're largely B2B actors, so you might not be especially familiar. To put in context, Givaudan is the largest flavor producer in the world. They control 20% of the market, so there are a huge uh, scope for collaboration there. And Cargill, again, someone you might not have heard of, but they're involved from farm to fork with uh, revenues in 2016 of over $100 billion. Um, as, we, as you remember, when we came in January in our one-to-ones, this was something we set out to do. We were going to develop industry links, and we accomplished that, and with the best people in the industry as well. So. Cool. So I guess it mustn't be so easy to deal with these guys, right? So how do you see your relationship developing with them? Um, I think at this stage we're really just seeing what the water looks like. Um, there's a huge scope for collaboration in various different scales and scope or contexts, um, but what this is is a path to move forward on. And if nothing else, it's a great way for us to show, when I can't show you our high-tech biotech tongue on screen, it's a great thing to say that the, the powers that be in this industry are saying that what we're doing makes sense. And it makes sense to me. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you.